So, the time has come and you've chosen to learn how to write scientific lab reports. If you haven't watched our introduction video, where we explain the stencil sheets, criteria sheets, writing concisely, and writing lab report titles, I recommend watching that first. There will of course be a link to that video in the description below. At the end of this video, however, you will have learned how to write an aim, a hypothesis, fair test points, and variables. Without further ado, let's start learning. An aim. Most likely the first thing you'll see when you open up the lab report stencil sheet is the section for writing the aim. To define the aim in simple terms, it is basically the objective of an experiment. In other words, you describe exactly what you are trying to do in the practical you have carried out. Generally, an aim should be brief. This means that an aim should generally not be longer than one to two sentences. Furthermore, when writing an aim, you want to be as specific as possible, a fact that is also described in the criteria sheet. This means that an aim such as determining the reactivity of metal and acid is too vague. What metals are you investigating? Are the metals a powder or are they ribbons? What acid will the metals react with? What is the temperature of the acid? These are just a few examples of how you can be more specific and detailed with your aim. Following our example, a better alternative can be seen on the screen now. Feel free to pause the video. Hypothesis A hypothesis is an educated guess or a suggested solution for an unexplained occurrence based on prior knowledge and observations surrounding a topic. To put it into different terms, hypotheses make generalizations, attempting to identify patterns. In order to write a scientific hypothesis, it is necessary to include a scientific explanation of why the guess you have made may be correct. If you struggle to write a scientific hypothesis, a hypothesis is generally written in an if, then, because structure. It is also important to note that a hypothesis can never be proven right. It can either be falsified or supported. To learn more about falsifiability, a link can be seen in the description below. Generally, following these steps will help you write a formal hypothesis that can connect scientific concepts and be tested. Fair test points. When you carry out a practical or test, you are often trying to measure one thing, and everything else is the same. For the sake of explanation, let's say that one thing is a cow, and we are trying to find if the amount of grass the cow eats will affect the happiness of the cow. We carry out a practical and feed a cow different amounts of grass. However, when we look back at the results, we find that the cow is unhappy when it's allowed to eat all the grass at once, and happy when it is given very little grass to eat. Well, that can't be right, you might think. And oftentimes, that's correct. That means something externally must be affecting the results. Or in other words, another variable or point was affecting the results. Now, in science, we don't want that to happen. To return to our cow example, how would we know if the amount of grass the cow eats is affecting the cow's happiness if we also change the amount of sleep the cow gets? Therefore, every point or variable we are not testing must be controlled. These are known as fair test points. Fair test points are points or variables that you have made sure to control to make sure that your results are valid. When you write fair test points in a lab report, you'll want to write all the fair test points you can think of and explain why controlling the points will make your test fair. In our example, fair test points might include the number of other cows there are, the age of the cow, or the type of grass the cow gets to eat. Variables. Variables are extremely similar to fair test points, only just a little bit more advanced. Basically, a variable is any factor that can be controlled, changed, or measured in an experiment. There are three main types of variables, the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the controlled variables. The independent variable is the variable that scientists change throughout an experiment. Why just one, may you ask? Well, as explained earlier with the fair test points, if you changed more than one variable, it'd be hard to figure out which variable is causing the change you are observing. After the independent variable, you have the dependent variable. The dependent variable is the variable that a scientist focuses his or her observations on to see how the variable will respond to the change in the independent variable. In other words, the dependent variable is the variable that is dependent on the independent variable. 
In an example, how will the kilograms of grass a cow gets to eat affect the cow's happiness? The kilograms of grass a cow gets to eat is the independent variable, and the cow's happiness is the dependent variable. This is because we are trying to determine if the happiness of the cow is dependent on the kilograms of grass a cow gets to eat. The kilograms of grass a cow gets to eat is also the variable that you are changing, thus making it the independent variable. Then, the last main type of variables are the controlled variables. Controlled variables are the things that a scientist wants to remain constant. In our example, everything that could possibly affect the cow's happiness are the controlled variables. They must be controlled in order to prevent interference with the results. For example, the number of cows that are nearby, the age of the cow, or the type of grass the cow gets to eat. When writing a lab report, make sure to list the independent and dependent variables correctly, and list all the controlled variables you can think of. It may be a little hard to wrap your head around variables, however, with practice, you'll become a master at recognizing variables. Now, before I end the second video to this tutorial series, I quickly want to recap what we have learned. We discussed how to write an aim, a scientific hypothesis, fair test points for MYP1-2, and variables for MYP2-3. I hope you found this video informative and want to start watching the next part to the lab report video tutorial series. In the next video, we will discuss how to write an apparatus list and diagram, a proper method, and how to make a graph and table with a scientific statement. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial, fill in our form on our website, and give us some feedback on how we could improve, as we are also here to improve.